I haven't shot a basketball since April, like maybe like April 5th. Like where you actually shot a basketball? Probably like April 5th. I'm gonna put on this D'Angelo Russell jersey so I could commemorate the good times. At least back then the Lakers actually had a future. <laughs> Jokes aside, I think we have enough content to finally bring you guys a Los Angeles Lakers update video. And for the most part, man, things have not been going according to plan. I mean, every single thing that the Los Angeles Lakers could have possibly wanted from this off season, although it's a young off season, it doesn't seem to be trending in that direction thus far. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. And now that we got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? No, I don't think the Los Angeles Lakers are better now than they were in 2017, but you could make an argument that things haven't necessarily got off to the greatest start. Now, look, I am not bashing the hiring of Darvin Ham. I wanted to get that off my chest immediately. I love the hiring of Darvin Ham. I think he's the perfect type of coach for this type of situation. He's clearly respected by LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and I don't necessarily know about Russell Westbrook. We're going to get to that in a little bit. I think he's the perfect combination of a head coach that's really looking to find his stepping stone to being a legitimate coach to this league to a person that could help the Los Angeles Lakers get over the hump. Like I said before, man, coaching the Los Angeles Lakers isn't an ideal job for a head coach with the pedigree of a Doc Rivers or even a Quinn Snyder. Imagine Quinn Snyder trying to install emotion offense for the Los Angeles Lakers. It just wouldn't work. Maybe if you traded LeBron James and got rid of Russell Westbrook, and maybe if you wanted to build around Anthony Davis alone, that would work, but not necessarily the Lakers and how they're constructed currently. That's besides the point. It doesn't seem like a situation where any head coach would have wanted to coach the Los Angeles Lakers unless if it was a head coach that was getting their big break or their big opportunity. So I think Darvin Ham's the right individual for the job. Now, the one storyline that we've been getting recently, and this is coming to us via Eric Pincus, but it's something we've been talking about at nauseum at this point as Los Angeles Lakers fans, is is the fact that Russell Westbrook is very likely to run it back with the Los Angeles Lakers. And I feel like at this point, we've heard it so many times that it's not necessarily a shock to us anymore. I mean, you heard Magic Johnson say it a while ago with a very beautiful rationale. Trading Russell Westbrook for any player right now would result in even worse contracts being taken back. You might as well try to roll the dice with Anthony Davis, LeBron James, and Russell Westbrook. Maybe change one variable, which is the head coach. And Maybe you get lucky and you're able to fortify the bench a little bit. Maybe the Lakers' golden offer of Talon Horton Tucker and a first round pick five years down the line would eventually entice a team to trade with them. Sure. But this is what the article says from the Russell Westbrook front. If the Lakers intend to trade Russell Westbrook, assuming he opts into his final year at $47.1 million, which come on, man, it's a safe assumption that he's going to be opting into that final year for $47.1 million. It's the first front office that will need to sacrifice. Several executives believe the Los Angeles Lakers would need to take on expensive players from the 15 to $25 million range with two or four years left on their contract. And this isn't anything specific, but the players you could expect would be individuals like Davis Bertans, Duncan Robinson, Julius Randle, Malcolm Brogdon, and then send out one or two first round picks, especially for quality rotation players in return, which I really appreciate reporting like this, far too many times I see trade proposals that send Russell Westbrook to the Utah Jazz for Donovan Mitchell. It's like stuff like that, maybe in 2008, pre-social media era, back when going to LA to grow your brand was a thing. Yes, I could buy that back then. I don't think that's happening anymore. I think those days are far gone based off of how we saw things go this past decade for us. And that's just me being objective. And even then it was bizarre, the stuff that the Lakers were able to pull back in their heyday. Now it continues to say that new head coach Darvin Ham recently praised Russell 
Westbrook while also demanding the veteran point guard along with the rest of the roster be ready to sacrifice for the greater good next season. But what about LeBron James? While the Lakers were paralyzed at the trade deadline without clarity from James, and they remain so, the star forward is eligible for an extension on August 4th, but most of the team's moves will need to happen in June and July. The Lakers are stuck without a commitment from James whose contract expires after this upcoming season. Competing executives and agents do not expect the team to get clarity from LeBron James ahead of the draft and free agency. So that's a pretty big deal because if you're the Los Angeles Lakers, if LeBron James gives you clarity and says, hey, I might not come back next year, you might be thinking a little bit more towards the future. How is life without LeBron James while not having as much draft compensation over the next couple of years? It's going to be a very rough rebuild for the 2020s for the Los Angeles Lakers if LeBron James leaves after this year. Now, the article continues to say that LeBron James could help make decisions easier if he verbally commits to an additional two seasons, timing his contract with Anthony Davis through 2024 to 2025, although AD has an early termination option to leave one year sooner. Unpleasant salary is easier to digest and trade if the Lakers are reinvested in James with Davis. The last thing the team would want to do is eat up its 2023 to 2024 cap space on players it doesn't value with James leaving as an unrestricted free agent. And they have the same fear with trading draft picks. If LeBron James were guaranteed to stick around another couple of seasons, LA might consider bigger moves like trading picks to get out of Russell Westbrook's contract for viable talent. It then goes into the Los Angeles Lakers current financial situation. They have a $6.4 million taxpayer mid-level exception and minimum contracts to spend to add talent if they retain Russell Westbrook. But after the breakout season Malik Monk endured over this past year on a prove it deal, don't expect to get Malik Monk back for the same amount of money. There are some other targets that the Lakers could get, and these are feasible targets just so you could temper your expectations like Otto Porter Jr., Joe Ingles, Gary Payton II, Bruce Brown Jr., Damian Jones, Isaiah Hartenstein, Thomas Bryant, Torian Prince, Gorgie Dang, Lonnie Walker IV, Gary Harris, Austin Rivers, or Aaron Holiday, amongst many others. So pretty much if the Lakers want to run it back with Russell Westbrook, which is what it seems like is going to be the case, at least that's what they're telling us, this could all be smoke for all you know, they're essentially going to be in the exact same position as they were last offseason when they acquired Russell Westbrook, which is you have this big three of LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook, but you don't have any capital to invest in depth. When Darvin Ham mentions sacrifices, the number one thing that comes to my mind is, hey, maybe Russell Westbrook becomes like a super expensive sixth man for the Los Angeles Lakers. Yes, it doesn't make sense because he's making 47 million a year, but if the cohesion isn't synergistically there between Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis, and LeBron James, it makes a lot of sense for Russell Westbrook to captain a bunch of minimum salary players coming off of the bench and trying to make magic happen, or at least attempting it, which I'm shocked that it wasn't even attempted last year with the Los Angeles Lakers. I felt like we were headed towards that direction when Frank Vogel was starting to bench Russell Westbrook, but no, that wasn't the case. Now, Russell Westbrook was actually asked whether or not he'd be okay with coming off of the bench. He apparently straight up looked at his teammates and laughed. Now, Darvin Ham and Russell Westbrook have spoken, and bear in mind, Darvin Ham got the job because they thought that Darvin Ham would be able to work with Russell Westbrook, but needless to say, the Lakers are in a bit of a logjam at this point, you have the Russell Westbrook issue, which it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to offload his contract anytime soon, or at least they claim not to. You have Anthony Davis claiming that he hasn't shot a basketball since April, which I know is terrifying for Laker fans to hear, but I don't necessarily think that's as big of a deal as people are making it out to be. And then you have LeBron James, who isn't committing to the Los Angeles Lakers past the next year. And to be honest, given his history, I don't necessarily know what to expect. All of LeBron James's free agencies were significantly different. There's been years where he's been transparent about his plans, and then there's years like when he jumped to Miami and then jumped back to Cleveland and then quietly signed with the Los Angeles Lakers. And he's already been very vocal about the fact that he wants to play with his son in the future once Bronny comes into the league, assuming he does come into the league. But at the same time, he's saying things like how he would love to run it with the Miami Heat. So what I'm trying to say is this offseason for the Los Angeles Lakers is scary. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about all this. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.